Hi, I'm Angela Duckworth, and I am thrilled. I think I'm uh, uh, just astonished that I'm sitting here next to Lee Waters, one of my very favorite authors and psychologists. And Lee, as you know, I, I loved your book and I loved your work. Thank you. I'm gonna start off this conversation by asking you, what is your conception of strengths-based parenting? Mm -hmm. Yep, great place to start. And for me, strength-based parenting, it really just, it's, a, it's an approach to parenting. It's a philosophy behind parenting. Um, which is quite simple really, and it's where we parent our children in a way where we help to connect them with their strengths, their qualities, their talents, so they can maximise and make the most of what they have, rather than trying to parent in a way where we're compensating or making up for what they lack. So its focus first is on building strength before we minimise weakness. So it's really a, a sort of focusing your attention and your energy on the assets as mm -hmm. opposed to, I think, as a lot of well-meaning parents yeah, do, yeah, I'm sure yeah. you'd agree, yeah. on remediating this or that. Yeah. We're both parents. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that you spent the morning with your kids. Right. I um, think as a scientist, my work is informed by, by that. What, um, what do you do that you know that is supported by scientific research mm -hmm. as a parent that might be different than what you would have done if you hadn't known about the research that you wrote about? Well, that's a great question. Um, so many things that I do, but I would say probably a, a one thing to share with parents is um, in that moment of tension, in that moment of where my kids are misbehaving. Everyone thinks my kids are perfect because I'm a strength-based parent, which right. is hilarious because they're not. They're you know perfectly imperfect, beautiful little beings who have strength and have weakness. So I think the biggest thing that um, knowing to take a strength-based approach has done is in that moment where I do need to discipline, is to discipline coming from strength. Mm. So be able to um, let my kids know, I'm, I'm unhappy with what you've done, this is not the right thing to do. But rather than shaming them or making them feel bad or having to be that parent who's always sort of externally nagging them to do something, is, is in that moment connect them with the strength. Mm. So what is the strength that you have that can be a solution to this situation? What do you need to do to move forward? What resource, what talent, what skill, what, what character strength do you have that you can move forward? And that's, that's really radically changed the way I parent in those tense moments. I'm gonna try to take this um, home with me and actually apply it to my 15 and 14 year old. Let me give you a specific <laughs> scenario. Let okay. me get the Lee Waters uh, professional opinion. Um, so uh, if I have a daughter, hypothetically, mm, if I had of a course, daughter, who, hypothetically, hypothetically um, had a lot of summer assignments as many children do uh -huh. and wasn't actually planning ahead the way her mother would. Mm -hmm. um, and I am, okay, now I'm lapsing into the language that it's obviously a real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm struggling with, you know, Know, I know that nagging is not effective yeah. and nagging really is actually I think a very deficiency oriented yeah. approach what should I do mm -hmm. okay so what are her strengths what are her strengths she's a um, incredibly imaginative um, thoughtful uh, person like she's very intellectual yeah. um, and she's really affectionate I think she's uh, very uh, interested in and um, uh, engaged in her social relationships, not only with her teenage friends, but also with her family. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. So she's got, so to use your language, she's got strengths of the head, she's got strengths of the heart. Yes. Exactly. I'm sure she's got strengths of will as well. We haven't mentioned those we're right now. We're working on that. Yeah, we're okay. working on that. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe if she had those, we wouldn't have this little <laughs> hypothetical problem Yeah, right this now. hypothetical <laughs> problem, yeah. Okay, so what I would do is um, I would tap into the strengths of the head, the strengths of the heart. So strengths of the head, she curious. Yes. She yeah. likes learning. Yeah. She likes intellectual mastery. Yes. So rather than um, having to say this is a task that's com you must complete because someone else has put this on you, mm. is to get her to come in it from her strength. So mm. what will she gain from doing the task rather than she just has to do this because it's a summer assignment? Right. Um, right. So ask her questions around what are you learning? What are you finding the most interesting? What's something new that you think you know that I don't know? Yeah. So getting yeah. her to motivate that way, and then with the strengths of the heart, what I would do is the reward, use that as the reward. You know, mm -hmm. So set up um, some kind of study schedule. We both know as psychologists to build in lots of breaks, to give brain breaks and those kinds of things. But so in those brain breaks and in those down times, reward her with um, connecting her up with her social strengths. So that's going out for a smoothie with you or yeah. um, getting onto you know, FaceTime, WhatsApp with her friends so she yeah. can connect with them. 
That is brilliant. And what I love about this is that in some ways, after you say it, it sounds completely common sense, mm -hmm. but, but it's really not, especially in that moment of parenting where you're like, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that that has not leapt to mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. <laughs> <Let me know laughs> <you first. laughs> there you go. Yes, I will email you. Yes. Um, what yes. I loved about your book is that you can read it as a parent. Yes. It's obviously written for parents. Yeah. But I think you can read it as a leader. Mm -hmm. You can read it as a teacher. You can read yeah. it as a coach. Yeah, no doubt. And actually, just on that point, when I, when I pitched the idea, um, to the publishing house, the, the editor who I'm working with said, why are you making this a parent book? Because it's such a big idea underneath it that can translate to everyone. Right. For me, my passion is that early intervention. Right. Is, is yeah. equipping young people with these skills. So parents, and you know, you and I both work in schools, schools are a natural avenue to do that. And exactly. so are families. But that's the feedback I'm getting from a lot of people oh, who aren't totally. parents who are saying, you know, this is just a people book. It's not really, it's yeah. not necessarily exclusively a parent book. It's a human nature, how do you nurture people yeah. kind of book, which I, right. which I love. So Lee, this has been terrific talking to you, and I'm looking forward to um, to more time together. This yeah. is a great, I, I mean this from the heart, it's a great book, and you do Thank great you. work more than anybody I know. You're applying the research in the most practical and, um, and common sense way to something that matters to everybody. You're the best, and thank you so much for supporting and endorsing the book. And likewise with your book and your work too, Angela. Thank you.